are the different topics we are going to look into. So we'll understand what is the problem of state in case of a web application and uh, passing the information, whatever the information user uh, has provided on the web application, how that information is passed to the server as a query string, uh, how to pass the information uh, using the URL path we are going to look into, uh, cookies, what are cookies, uh, how it will uh, help with the maintaining the state that we'll see, Serial, serialization, then session state, HTML, five web storage, caching. These are the topics we are going to look into uh, this uh, particular uh, module. First, uh, we'll understand the, the problem of a, a state in web application. So, uh, what is a, a state? A state is a nothing but the, uh, uh, the whatever the information, current uh, uh, user information, uh, what are the files uh, he has accessed, what updates he has made, uh, whatever the, uh, all comprising all the information, uh, his uh, maybe his IP address, uh, 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 his location, all those information can be formed as a, uh, we, we can call it as a state. Basically, to <coughs> identify a, a particular user, and helping that user with all the uh, uh, functionality of the application uh, in order to give all the functionality knowing the state is most important essential thing we should know who is the user and according to him we can cater for example uh, uh, let us say you know, the web application is a, a e-commerce website uh, there will be many users to the web application and this uh, uh, request http request uh, will come from millions of users. So, if particular user has selected an item and he has put it in the cart, we should know which user has uh, which item and we should identify his cart only. If he is uh, making uh, any kind of a payments, we have to know that particular uh, user is uh, using his own cart and making the payment and uh, accessing his information. In order to do that, uh, we have to uh, uh, understand the what is the uh, state. So here, in case of a web, uh, in case of a desktop application, uh, desktop application, we have one process that is running. Uh, there is no problem with the uh, state because uh, one process and it has uh, access to all the information. For example, certain files are uh, opened uh, by that particular uh, user. Certain files are saved. All the information will be available. Uh, locally in that particular uh, desktop. So uh, the state is not a, a problem in case of a desktop application. But in case of a web application, the application uh, is access to the uh, browser and it will send a request to the server. So so the, the server will receive the uh, HTTP request from the particular browser from particular uh, user. And uh, when you say a uh, open uh, 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 HTTP request, <clears throat> it will try to open some kind of a, a file. This particular request would be same for if there are a thousand users and they are clicking on the op open, uh, the kind of HTTP request that will come is exactly the same. So, uh, server has no way to know uh, which uh, request means it will know it is a request for certain resource like open.php but it is coming from uh, which user it will not know. Uh, if you want to know that particular uh, user, uh, we have to intervene programmatically. That is, we have to maintain the <coughs> state. So all these operations, if you want to uh, 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 contain for a particular user, then you have to maintain the state. So maintaining the state is a, a big uh, problem in case of a, a web application. And we will see how we can do that. Unlike the unified single process, that is the typical desktop application, web application consists of series of 
disconnected HTTP request to a web server, where each request for a server page is essentially request to run a separate program. So, uh, in case of a desktop application, it's a single process. But here, uh, we get to so many HTTP requests, and those are disconnected HTTP requests, and basically those requests to uh, it, it will essentially it will request certain resources on the uh, server uh, so that a certain program can be executed. HTTP protocol does not, uh, without programming interve intervention, distinguish two requests by one source uh, from two requests uh, from two different users. So as I said, if the request HTTP requests are uh, coming from different users, uh, HTTP protocol doesn't have uh, any uh, way to know uh, uh, these requests are coming from which users. So we have to programmatically intervene in order to understand the uh, where the request is coming from. So here is the uh, one example. Uh, here we have a user X. So he is a user X accessing the web application and he makes two requests. So you can see the two requests. One is for uh, uh, one is the uh, get HTTP request. Uh, requesting a index.php and another get request uh, requesting a product.php. So these two requests are coming from the uh, same user. What the server will know is the just the HTTP request. And uh, this is essentially, this situation is exactly similar to this situation where you can see the request, the these two requests are coming from two different users. So user X is requesting for index.php and for uh, user Y, he is requesting uh, product.php. Essentially, these two requests are exactly the same, but here it is coming from two different users. But uh, uh, the, uh, here, server has no way to distinguish between uh, two uh, these uh, uh, requests. Uh, the index.php is coming from the user X, and product.php is coming from the user Y. So, uh, how to solve this using the the state. So, what is the need for this? Uh, I gave an example of a e-commerce website. <clears throat> Particular user, he has uh, one uh, request where he is adding product to the shopping cart. So, he there is a shopping cart uh, with uh, the clicks. He is adding the uh, items there, and uh, next phase he will go back uh, and check out for the payment, pay for the item in the cart. So these actions, two actions are there and unless and until we know this is coming from the same user, okay, uh, we cannot, will not be able to handle this because uh, if I certain user X has added N items, N number of items, we should know which user has added N items and we should be able to recognize that user when he is clicking on the P. So when he is clicking on the uh, P, uh, that will come as a HTTP request. You should know that that request came from the user X so that you can uh, take the appropriate action. Okay. So how, how do we uh, reach our uh, desired outcome? Uh, what mechanisms are available in uh, available within the HTTP to pass the information to the server in our request? Okay. In HTTP, we can pass information using either the uh, query strings or uh, cookies. Uh, query strings, you have already, we have seen when we are making a, uh, uh, a certain request, uh, uh, we can uh, send the a query string either as a part of the URL uh, or as a part of the HTTP header. So in case of a get, it would be a, a part of the URL. In case of a uh, uh, post request, it would be a part of the header. We can send it as a query string. And what is a query string? Essentially, it is the name and value pair. Okay, Name and value pair separated by the ampersand. And uh, another way to do it on the uh, client browser side is the using cookies. Passing the information via query string. So how to do that? So this is the uh, browser where my web application is running. Uh, I have certain fields here, um, artist, uh, year, and nationality. User will enter the values here. So he has, for example, here he has entered the, for artist, he has entered the value Picasso. And for year, he has entered 1906. 
and nationality he has selected as Spain. When user click on the a uh, submit uh, uh, button, this particular form will get submitted to the a uh, server. And if it is a get method, if it is a get method, it will be sent like this query string: artist is equal to a uh, Picasso. Uh, this control name given to this control is artist. Name given to this control is year. Name given to this control is a uh, nation. And this is the name and the uh, value pair. Value is whatever user has entered separated by ampersand. So this is ampersand. Then we have year 1906 and uh, nation is equal to Spain. This is the uh, query string. If it is a post method, it will be sent as a part of the HTTP header. So inside the HTTP header, uh, if it is a post method, okay, we have artist is equal to Picasso, same information separated by the ampersand. Passing the information via URL path. So there is another uh, way to pass the uh, information uh, that is uh, through the uh, URL. So uh, using the dynamic URLs, there is uh, uh, query string parameters. When we are sending uh, using the query string parameters, uh, this URL, basically what you are saying, th this URL, this URL will be uh, changed according to as per the information here. Okay, dynamically it will be changed. If the year here is 2000, this um, URL will change, this will ch value will change to 2000. Based on whatever the <coughs> inputs, uh, URL will dynamically uh, change. Dynamic URLs are a pretty essential part of web application development. How can we do without them? So there is another way to uh, do it, uh, that is using the uh, a static, okay? Uh, static uh, uh, way of doing it. So the answer is to rewrite the dynamic URL into a, a static one. Okay, The process is commonly called as a URL rewriting and this process we call it as a URL rewriting. We will see some of the examples how it can be uh, done. And when we are uh, doing the URL uh, rewriting, uh, it is very helpful for the search engine optimization, SEO. Uh, so basically, it will be easily uh, uh, whenever there is a, any search engine that is uh, uh, looking out for the certain information and it is looking for the uh, a website. Uh, based on the kind of a rewriting, how you use uh, 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 the URL rewriting, uh, your website or your application will come up in the top rank. So uh, for search engine, uh, the priority given to your website will be uh, high. So your website will be displayed on the higher ranks. We can try uh, doing our own rewriting. Let us begin with the following URL. Uh, with its query string information. So here is the one example with the, this is a query string information. This is the website we have www.sumdomain.com forward slash. Then we have the, the name of the resource of the server display artist.php question mark. Then we have uh, this value artist is equal to a 16 uh, on particular <coughs> web application. Uh, like uh, uh, there is a uh, information about the artist 16. So we don't know who, who is the artist. It is uh, identified by the number 16. So another alternate approach for uh, rewriting this URL is like this. Uh, same www.sumdomain.com forward slash artists. So we will have a, uh, we are changing the URL. We are using the artist forward slash uh, instead of having this as a, a value, we are using that as the uh, the PHP 16.php. Notice that the query string name and the value have been turned into a path name. So the artist and uh, the whatever the value we had here that has been converted into the URL path names. So one could improve this to make it more SEO, that is search engine optimization friendly using following. So this is uh, uh, another, this is a good, uh, alternate way of uh, representing it. So another good way of uh, representing is uh, here you can see you are using the same website forward slash artists and forward slash you are giving the name of the artist. So Mary hyphen Kasai. So uh, by having the, the URLs like this, a search engine uh, will be able to easily identify 
and bring your website to the uh, top when it is a listing on the website uh, if uh, there is a uh, good url uh, rewriting is used then it will come up in the uh, search and also uh, when we have uh, uh, a url like this uh, for uh, humans also it is very easily they can identify the uh, information from that particular url instead of having like this if you have the query string like this it is hard to interpret in this case uh, uh, it is very easy to interpret that uh, in this website we have artist and in that artist we have this particular uh, artist that is named mary cassette so there will be more artists okay there will be more uh, names of the artists under this artist path okay similarly if there is any other um, information available on that particular website that can have a similar structure forward let's say products uh, products forward slash and actual name of the product you can have so here is the uh, example uh, the same uh, whatever the uh, we talked about how uh, seo will be able to search uh, better when you have a better url rewriting uh, this particular example you can see here we have uh, http colon forward slash forward slash this is the uh, information that is searched on the uh, google what is the information uh, you may not be able to see it what is written here is what is searched on the google is uh, reproduction raffle portrait la dona uh, this is uh, velata okay that is the name of the uh, artist that is what has been searched and on the top what you can see this url which is shown here this is the url that is you are uh, seeing so in this case this particular name whatever has been searched uh, that is used as the name of the html which will easily uh, come up as the uh, top ranking uh, website so you can see this is listed on the top then we have other ways so uh, this has some other information along with the, uh, the, the, the string is very large so this got the uh, second like uh, uh, at the uh, next level and on the uh, third level we have this particular this way of representation where we have a forward slash raffle and then we have the name la uh, la donna velata that is the name uh, given along with the some number is also there so it will go in the uh, lower order of the listing by the seo and if you see this is the one the last which is uh, you are seeing the last one is the which is having the uh, query string so when you have the query string uh, you can see here v code is there some kind of a code is there and title is there in in the title is you be it will be able to uh, search and list it so whenever uh, you have url rewriting okay if you are used a very structured way of uh, giving the url then the search engine uh, will be e will be able to easily search and uh, put the particular uh, web application on top of the listing in case of a uh, apache uh, how do we, how do we do the url rewriting okay uh, the mod underscore rewrite module uses a rule based rewriting the engine that uh, utilizes the Perl compatible regular expression uh, to change the URLs so that the requested URL can be mapped or redirected to another URL internally. So in case of a, a Apache, uh, the module mod underscore rewrite that is used uh, for uh, um, uh, either uh, changing the URL uh, or redirecting to another URL uh, internally. Uh, and that utilizes the uh, Perl compatible uh, regular expression uh, to change the URLs. Okay, next one is cookies. So, what are uh, cookies? Uh, cookies are uh, it is a client side approach to uh, for persisting a state information. So, if you want to uh, persist the uh, persist is what uh, saving the information so on the uh, client side uh, whatever the uh, activities whatever the um, uh, selection pattern that uh, particular user has uh, 
uh, preferences that user has. If you want to capture all those preferences, you can use the uh, cookies and uh, cookies will be on the, the client side. Okay, uh, it cookies will be uh, 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 the browser will make sure will handle uh, the cookies. It will manage the uh, cookies on the uh, the client side. And what are cookies? They are nothing but the uh, name value pairs. So cookies are uh, nothing but the name value pairs, and that will be saved in uh, uh, either one or uh, more text files, and it is managed by the browser. So whenever you uh, make any uh, cookies set any kind of a new cookies uh, inside your uh, code uh, in the web application uh, uh, that information will be saved as a, a name and a value pair and where it will be saved it will be saved on the uh, uh, one or uh, more text files on the client system okay and that file is managed by the a browser whichever browser is accessing the uh, web application that browser will manage those files while cookie information is stored and retrieved by the browser the information in cookie travels within the http header okay the uh, the browser will maintain the a uh, cookie whatever the cookie information that will be ma uh, maintained by the uh, um, uh, browser that is what uh, storing the cookies and getting the or retrieving the information uh, uh, from those cookies is done by the browser and this information is passed to the the server using the http header so the cookie information will be included inside the http uh, header and that will be passed to the server uh, sites that use cookies should not depend on their availability for critical features okay so uh, uh, if you are having any kind of a, a critical features like very important features then you should not depend upon the uh, cookies because uh, cookies are on the client side and uh, those client side it can be tampered by the user very easily either they can re remove the uh, cookie or modify the uh, cookie and also sometimes what happens uh, some other softwares they can have a uh, 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 they could change uh, these kind of a files because these files will be present in the file system uh, they can be uh, corrupted so there is a lot of possibility of uh, having not right kind of a cookie so if you have any kind of a, uh, a critical features it should not be dependent on the cookies so you should use a uh, there are other solutions which are available uh, without using the cookies uh, if there is any critical features that should be implemented so general kind of a uh, features can be provided using the cookies if there is any uh, critical fe features that should not have a dependency on the cookies because the reliability of the uh, cookies is itself uh, is um, on the client system is uh, uh, like uh, it is unknown like uh, either user can delete it or it can get tampered how the uh, how does the cookies work so this is a uh, example here given uh, this is the user and he makes a uh, request okay request uh, to the uh, website www.somsite.com he makes the uh, request and that request will come to the uh, web server okay when it comes to the web server the page, uh, uh, the web server page, it sets the values for the the cookie. It will set the uh, cookie values as part of a, a response. When it is sending the response, you can see here this is the uh, HTTP response that is given to the client that is given to the this particular uh, browser client, and you can see this is apart from uh, other header information. HTTP has uh, other information like. Uh, a date okay uh, protocol uh, version okay and uh, uh, status of the uh, http request then host information is there and some other information is there um, apart from that you can see uh, this is the information set hyphen cookie and name is equal to value uh, set hyphen cookie name two is equal to value two and it has a expire okay uh, you can set a, a cookie with the expiry or you can have a, a cookie without the expiry this particular cookie uh, 
uh, ha doesn't have a uh, this particular cookie doesn't have an expiry date this has a expiry date excuse me so now what happens is uh, this particular web application it has set two cookies one is the name second cookie is the name too so that information when it is come when it comes as a part of a response browser will save the cookie values in the text files okay on the uh, client system and it will save those text file and when after saving those text files it will make a association with this website so that particular um, text files are uh, stored on the client system and it makes a association with uh, this particular uh, uh, website or the web application because you know uh, users will be accessing uh, thousands of uh, applications web applications and um, possibly every web application is using some kind of a cookies so uh, when a particular um, web application is uh, creating some kind of a, a cookies browser has to make sure that which cookies is set by which particular web application so the browser makes sure that there is an association between the the files created in this particular example these cookies are saved in a let's say this text file okay and these two values will be stored inside that text file and a browser will make sure that this file is associated with the uh, uh, this www.sumsite.com so if there is any persistent cookies whenever users revisits the uh, website let's say after three days so the same cookie information will be stored on the browser so this particular uh, browser will be able to access that cookie information so once it is uh, stored browser reads the cookie values from text file for each subsequent request for the uh, some site.com so once the information once the cookie is stored on the uh, particular client whenever this user is making any other request any so first after the first request the cookies will be set okay cookies will be set the values will be set on the uh, by the browser on the uh, user system any subsequent uh, request so uh, here you can see a uh, user makes another request to page in domain so there are uh, some other request he will make uh, he will click on uh, some uh, part of the web application to make another request whenever the a user makes any further requests to the server that cookie information will be passed to the the web server you can see uh, this is the information cookie whatever value was set that value will be sent back so name is equal to value name 2 is equal to value 2 cookies values travel in every subsequent http request for that particular domain and uh, whatever the requests are uh, for uh, uh, further request http request every request will have this cookie information okay all the what n number of cookies are set n number of cookies information will be sent back to the a uh, server server for some site.com retrieves these cookies okay cookie values from the request header and uses them to customize the response so uh, on the server side it will read the cookies uh, from this http request it will read the uh, all the cookies and accordingly it will take a uh, 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 proper uh, uh, action okay uh, for example if it is a uh, um, e-commerce website uh, then let us say uh, you user has added the uh, some products so that information is uh, will be stored in the a cookie maybe user information uh, and the product information and uh, when user clicks on the pay okay so all the cook, uh, cookies that are set will be sent back to the uh, sent back to the server so when server looks at that particular uh, cookie information it will come to know uh, who is the user what he is requesting and what what he wants to do and accordingly it will do the the uh, further payment if it is a payment then it will do the a uh, payment there are uh, two kinds of cookies are there okay uh, first one is called as a session cookie and the second one is the uh, persistent cookies 
ओके व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सेशन कुकी एंड परसिस्टेंट कुकी सेशन कुकी हैज एन एक्सपायर एक्सपायरी स्टेटेड इन आवर अर्लियर एग्जांपल यू कैन सी दिस पर्टिकुलर कुकी नेम टू हैज अ एक्सपायरी डेट एंड व्हिच एवर हैज अ एक्सपायरी डेट दैट इज अ सेशन कुकी and uh, this one doesn't have a expiry that is called as a, a persistent cookie a session cookie has no expiry stated and thus will be deleted at the end of the uh, user uh, browsing the session okay uh, so uh, sorry uh, this is a, a session cookie because there is a uh, no uh, date specified here the expiry date specified so this is a persistent cookie so whatever is the session cookie uh, which does not have the expiry date it will get uh, uh, deleted whenever the uh, browsing session ends whenever the uh, users browsing session end that time all those cookies will be uh, deleted however uh, persistent cookies uh, have a expiry date specified so persistent uh, cookie persistent in the cell it will persist okay as long as the expiry date if let let us say uh, the expiry is set as 5 uh, uh, days so that persistent cookie will be uh, in that particular system for 5 uh, days how to use the cookies <clears throat> how we can write a cookie so so far we saw uh, how uh, cookies are uh, uh, used uh, to uh, store the information and uh, retrieve the information on the server and by knowing the uh, uh, the cookie status we can understand the state okay uh, state and when we understand the state we can take the actions accordingly so how to write the cookie this is the code example this is the beginning of the the php code uh, this is the end of the php code uh, we are uh, setting a variable dollar uh, expiry time okay is equal to this is a time object so it will get a, a current time and we are adding a certain uh, we are adding certain time to it what time we are adding we are adding uh, 24 hours uh, into 60 minutes into 60 seconds so these many seconds we are adding basically nothing but we are setting adding one day from the current time whenever a user accesses the application when this code piece this particular code executes at uh, whatever is the time at that particular time uh, one day will be added to that time so that is the dollar expiry time then this is how we are going to uh, create the two variables dollar name is equal to user name we are setting the user name and dollar uh, value is equal to ricardo so this is the uh, name of the cookie user name is the name of the cookie and what is the value stored uh, uh, ricardo that is the value stored and how do we set the cookie you will use this particular method set cookie you call the set cookie and pass these values so you are uh, sending dollar name comma dollar value comma dollar expiry time so uh, the name of the cookie would be user name and value would be ricardo and expiry time would be uh, plus one day from that uh, current time so this is how you are setting a persistent cookie if you don't specify the expiry time then it will become a, a session cookie and whenever you are using a session cookie whenever that browser session uh, ends that cookie will be deleted it is important to note that cookies must be written before any other page output so this is very important you have to write uh, 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 all the uh, cookies should be written before outputting any kind of a uh, information on the page before outputting anything on the page you have to set the cookies uh, in the previous code we understood how to uh, set the cookie means how to uh, write a cookie once you write the cookie whenever we get the response we need to read the cookie because uh, we saw with every uh, request okay Uh, if the cookies are already set with every request we are going to get the uh, all the cookie information all the cookie uh, name and value pair will be sent back so that it will be available for the server how to read on the server reading a cookie so reading a cookie 
we have a, uh, a super global and uh, dollar underscore cookie so uh, dollar uh, underscore cookie super global will store all the cookie information uh, in the form of a, a key value pair so if it access the particular uh, key uh, the name of the cookie uh, that name will be uh, mapped to a, a value that's how it will be able to access so this is the beginning of a php code this is the end of the php code inside we are checking uh, whether uh, cookie uh, valid cookie is present uh, if it is present then what is the value how we how to access that is we have if condition and what we are checking now uh, this is not so it will uh, make true to false false to uh, true is set okay and inside we are passing is set is the function uh, it will uh, know whether that particular value is set or not what we are checking dollar cookie and we are giving the name of the cookie so in the previous code what is the name we gave for the cookie the name is given as username so you give dollar cookie dollar cookie and you give the key key as the username then if it is set it will return true if it is not set it will return a uh, false if it is not set uh, this is set will return false and we are making not on the false so false will become true then it will come in this particular true block of the if condition and inside the true block uh, whatever the action you want to uh, take if the cookie is not set you can take here so it will come in the true block when no valid cookie is found in this particular case, we have set the value, right? Dollar value is Ricardo. So dollar underscore cookie username. This is this key is mapped to the value of Ricardo. And uh, since there is a, a value, uh, this will uh, return is set. Uh, it will uh, return uh, true. Then you are making it as not true will become false. So it will come to the else condition. In the else condition, you are when when it will come to the else condition uh, when a valid cookie is found the username retrieved from the uh, cookie is then you are printing the value uh, echo dollar underscore cookie username so this is echo is it will output to the browser and this key username key is uh, mapped to ricardo that is the value on the uh, browser you will see uh, two things you will see one is the the user retrieved from the cookie is and the value is recall that will be outputted onto the the browser uh, in <coughs> addition to <coughs> excuse me in addition to being uh, used to track authenticated users and shopping carts cookies can implement so these are the different things using cookies we can implement uh, rem remember me persistent cookie so remember me is so you are remembering the uh, what was the last actions uh, that are carried by the particular user so you can uh, uh, to carry forward from there uh, you can use the uh, remember me one example for uh, this is like uh, if there is a web application uh, where you are uh, uh, like uh, giving many books uh, for the reading for the user and uh, let us say a user is uh, reading certain book and he has finished reading uh, 100 pages in the last session uh, when it comes back uh, to your application web application it is <clears throat> uh, we can remember the 100th page and we can directly take him to the 101th page so he has already completed 100 pages so it is a kind of a uh, like a remember me so this is one example uh, there are uh, many such things uh, uh, remember me can be used for the uh, uh, good user experience then uh, store user preferences so whatever the user preferences are there uh, you can st uh, store those information for example uh, you are giving uh, uh, different layouts right uh, if user has a particular preference in the uh, particular uh, layout particular font particular color if are those things are customizable or other kinds of pre preferences uh, maybe uh, related to um, uh, uh, users uh, uh, reading if it is a reading what kind of a uh, what categories of uh, uh, reading users uh, likes uh, all those uh, can be taken as a preference and 
you can remember those preferences and based on those preferences uh, you can uh, display the uh, information on the web application track users browsing behavior how uh, user is uh, uh, browsing you can track uh, those information and uh, that uh, basically these kinds of information will uh, help in uh, making user experience rich okay uh, user will feel more comfortable by uh, uh, that way you can use the uh, cookies next one is the uh, serialization okay we will see uh, what is serialization uh, and how it is uh, uh, useful uh, in the next session